intro. Um, I guess this will do for an intro. I don't know. Uh, normally when I start my fishing videos, I'm, I'm not doing it in a, in a McAllister's parking lot right behind a busy highway. But you know what? This will work. The reason why I'm filming today's intro in a parking lot is because today's fishing mission is going to be just a little bit unique. It's so funny. I've got the opportunity to travel pretty much anywhere in the world. I've got a boat. I've got rods. I can fish in very many destinations. But the one thing that I love to do and I choose to do so often is do some urban pond hopping. Right now I'm in the outskirts of Dallas, more specifically the Plano area. And I'm going to jump around to some dirty little ponds and show you guys how amazing the fishing can be in the concrete jungle. So we are going to get after it today. But before I do that, I want to show you guys my new sweatshirt. What do you think? So I want to give you a sneak peek of what we got right now. Of course, we've got the retro OG rigged fish right here, the John B. Fish. We've also got the rigged tees, which just basically say rig. They come in a bunch of different colors. We've also got the Shield R sweatshirt, which is like super comfy. It's perfect for those mornings. And also, since summer's coming up, we've got the Arowana tank top, which is like the super elaborate design. And it's honestly one of my favorites. But anyway, I had to pimp out my, my merch for a bit. I don't normally do that. And I kind of want to show you guys what I've been working on for the past few months. So if you guys want to get some, uh, some, some dope threads, Check the link in the description below. The very top, it'll say dope threads. Just click that link, pick up some stuff, post it on IG with a big bass, and I'll give it a thumbs up and I'll comment. Uh, what was I saying? Oh yeah, urban pond fishing. Let's get after it. Boom, the land of the freaking 10 pounders, just like right there. It may look like a drainage ditch, mainly because it is a drainage ditch, but it has bass. And I'm gonna show you some of the fish that lurk in um, these seemingly low key spots. So let's, oh, I just poked my eye. <laughs> Let's get after it, get rigged up, and go crank on some toadies. I'll catch you on the water. Holy smokes, this looks dope. This looks really dope. Look at this. This looks rad. Oh, I just had one. He hammered it. He hammered it. I got smoked. I got absolutely lit up. He'll heat it again. I got lit up. First part of the day on the swim bait. Shoot, my line went slack. I thought he had it. Oh. Oh my God, I had one. That was like a freaking full on largemouth. Holy moly, that was a good bite. God, how did I not catch that guy? He hammered it, like put slack in my line and everything. There he is. Got him. Oh my God, he came off, what the f He came back for it again. Are you joking me? What is going on here? How do I miss a fish twice? I let him eat it too, I let him really eat it that time. For all you pond guys out there, one thing I always look for like right off the bat is any sort of like irregularity and in, in current, uh, an area where there's a creek dumping into the pond. Perfect example, first cast in there, I got hit, went right back in there and I missed that one. My drag I think was too loose or something, that was, that was really crusty. That was like a big time rookie mistake on my end. First good bite of the day. Looked like a pretty good fish too. Like, I don't think that fish is tiny. I'm walking across the sludge to get to the honey hole. Oh, this stuff is thick. Oh, it looks like there's like a little bed right there. Oh, there's, there's a fish. There's a little fish. I can't believe that this water's so skinny, but there's like largemouth stacked up over here. Damn, this water's crystal clear over here. The first thing you think of when you hear urban creeks and ponds is how dirty they're probably gonna be and how they've got like, you know, chemicals in them, but this is just totally not the case. Just beautiful water coming out of this little drainage ditch. Oh, there's one. Oh, yes, yes, finally. It's happening, it's happening. Wow, that was super cool. Like, I loved it. <laughs> oh, wow, he ate it really good. Okay, starting point. This is our stepping stone for the day. I caught that guy in a little sink. I know I said I wanted to really focus on the swim bait and kind of, you know, try to find some bigger fish today in these ponds. I caught that guy on a five inch uh, cinnamon Gary Yamamoto bait. I don't know if you guys can tell, but I am really struggling to get these fish to bite for some odd reason. These little bass are acting quite strange. They just aren't acting hungry. They're just kind of roaming around, not, not really doing much. Um, okay, anyway, I'm gonna put this guy back in the water. And there you have it, first fish of the day.
car is so damn annoying. Every time I leave the door open, it just rings. Listen to that. That is brutal. That would be like the main thing from keeping me buying this car. Anyway, uh, where was I? Oh, um, I will say I did a little recon. I just pulled up the spot, just gave like a quick look, okay, before you guys did. And I did see quite a chunky fish, like one nice fish. It looked like it was four pounds, which would be crazy if we caught today. But anyway, second spot, let's make it happen. There's one. Oh my gosh, nice fish on the swim bait. On the swim bait. Oh my gosh. On the swim bait. Come here, come here, come here. Whoosh. Look at the size of that guy. You have got to be joking me. Just freaking annihilated that depths bull shooter. That is not a small bait either. Like, wow. It's a largemouth. Yeah. Yeah, neither did I. Just walked right past and I saw one swim off. Yeah, hey, I'll come up there. Yeah. Ate a big bluegill swim bait. Wow. Yeah, pretty cool. Have a good one. Thank you. Take care. And there you have it. Just right outside a busy area. Nice little park. Out comes a big bass on a swim bait. So unreal. Let's get Bertha back in the water. I have a strange hunch that this fish was spawning. Look at that tail. You can tell when they're spawning because usually the bottom end of their tail is a little cut up from fanning rocks and gravel. Not, not too shabby. We're looking good, guys. Oh my goodness, she was pissed off. Yeah, this is pretty crazy. I mean, I just pulled up the spot again, a lake, a pond, whatever you want to call it, that I've never fished before. And I took maybe four casts in there with that giant depths bull shooter and just got crunched on. Got a good feeling I'm just gonna keep working this area. The water's like pretty stained, but it's also somewhat clear. It's got like this weird blue to it. I'm sure whoever owns this pond is dumping like sulfur or sulfate, phosphorus, I don't know. Whatever makes the pond blue, that's what they're dumping in here. Doesn't bother the fish though. Nice first fish. <laughs> Yeah. When I'm fishing these ponds, I want to go after the biggest and the baddest that live in here. It's a small body of water. This is not a big plain field. So I chose a bait out of my arsenal that I know draws in some pretty big bites. This is actually a Japanese swim bait. It's a Depths Bull Shooter. It's about $109 bluegill glide bait. Very expensive, but you get what you pay for in this bait. It's got a really awesome true glide. The color is just super sweet too. You've got these almost lifelike little pectoral fins too. The hooks are really sharp. It's an all around good bait. I've been using it since I was a kid. They make a smaller version, but right now I'm using the, I think this is a 190 size. Glide bait essentially does what it sounds like. It just kind of glides side to side. You have the option to kind of kill it too and let it suspend there. This is a sinking one. It's like a slow sink. And if you just kill it, it lets that bait sit there and gives some, gives the fish, a, uh, you know, kind of an opportunity to strike. That fish just ate it as I was reeling it in, which you can do. It's probably the simplest way to throw it. I think people trip up on these baits. I think because they're so big, they can't catch them in their ponds but I've been throwing these in Illinois for many years now and I've had lots of luck. You don't need big fish to eat them too. That was like a, like a three pound fish and he just annihilated it. Keep that in mind, don't be afraid to throw these baits. They're awesome lures and I mean, if you're looking for the bigs, it's the way to go. Jesus, look how blue that water is. I swear to God, this is not Photoshop either. Like this water is actually that blue. That looks weird, man. It's like stained blue too. It's not like clear blue. It's like really strange colored blue. One of the many perks of fishing urban spots, I guess so. You get some, uh, you get some icy raspberry blue water. Look at, that's weird. I wonder if it's showing up on the GoPro. I mean, that's just straight like ocean blue. Holy moly, look at all this fry. There's a ton of fry over here, wow. Oh, there's the mother. There's the mama bass. Oh, she did not like that swim bait. She did not like that swim bait. We're gonna get this fish. So that's so funny, there's a fish over there that is just spawning right now. There's a bass over here that's guarding its babies. I'm locked in on a, on a fish right now. Just over there by those bushes was a fish spawning, like just, just now spawning. And then right in front of me is a fish that has already made its babies, made its nest, and is now guarding its fry, which is like a group of you know, micro bass. Largemouth are great parents. They really are. So this guy's guarding his babies. I'm casting on the outskirts of the babies almost to make it seem like a bluegill is picking off their, their young, which isn't the case. It's just a, just a piece of plastic. So I'm gonna see if I can get this guy to come up and lunge at it. Oh, she fucking had it. Oh, we are so close. She like popped my rod. Yes, there she is. I got her. Oosh. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Come here. Come here. Come here. Come here. Barely hooked. Oh, she just came off. <laughs> 
Hey, that's enough for me. I got the fish to eat. All I really wanted is just to feel her at the end of my line. Really sick, man, to watch her come up and eat that. I will say it was getting way harder like movement reaction for her when I was like consistently moving it. Like it, she did not react when it was just sitting there. I think the reason why is because that bait had to make it look like it was threatening to the, um, the fry. So that's why I was burning across. So sick though, that's awesome. Just crunched it, man. God, this thing is annoying. Okay. Spot number three. This is gonna be the last spot I fished today because, uh, well, the main reason why I'm out and about right now is because I had to get the rig runner fixed. Uh, there was some things that needed to, well, basically there was a giant recall and uh, if the airbag comes off of my car, it explodes shards of metal into my facial region. So I had to get that attended to. But yeah, after this pond, I should probably go back and pick up my whip, but this looks pretty good. I think I'm gonna leave the swim bait, the craw, and the Cinco in the car, pick up the frog because it looks extra, extra soupy. Oh, I walked it, damn it. Okay, let's head down there and see what it's all about. Just bringing a frog rod, nothing else. Have not caught a frogfish this year, so I'm gonna try to break that curse. Yes, I got him. Oh, yes. Frog fish. I think he's still on. Yeah, he's still on. Drag him in. Yes. Oh, not a small one either. Pretty good sized fish. Woo. That is the frog fish that I was after. You know you're fishing the good stuff when your bass comes out looking like a freaking Caesar salad. That's awesome. He ate it like on my first twitch too. Well, we did it. First frog fish of the year. <laughs> She's probably about two pounds just covered in the slop. Fishing this Parmesan cheese right now and she came right on the edge, just way over there. I bet you guys couldn't even see the blow up. It was so far out, but not too bad. Let's get her unhooked. Oh, she's barely hooked. She's just barely hooked. Just gonna give a quick pan so you guys have a look as to what the fish actually looks like with all of the slop. Not too bad. Thank you so much. Sick. I love frog fishing, man. It's hands down one of my favorite things ever. Everything about it, man, the stuff you're fishing, you're usually fishing really crusty shallow water with a bunch of grass, a bunch of snot, and the blow up, oh my God, the blow up is, is so amazing. I miss that. I really miss that. <laughs> I just scooted on over to the next pond. Um, this is spot number four. I might fish five total today. I said I was gonna stop at that last pond, but I only caught one fish and this pond was like right next door. So I just, like I just could not, you know? Like I gotta check her out. I think I have fished this pond before. This might be the only one today that I have fished more than once. There's one. Oh, I'm on. Yes, on the swim bait. Yes, yes, yes. Keep her down, keep her down. Keep her down, keep her down, keep her down. Boat flippage, woo! Okay, okay, I see you with the bluegill hanging out your mouth. Damn, son, you were hungry for that snack. You're like, you don't need big fish to eat these swim baits. They really are an amazing bait to throw outside of like jigs and crankbaits. Like, you don't need a big fish to, to get aggressive and eat it. Wow, that's dope. Right in that waterfall. Spot number four is already paying off. Boom! Get some of that, stinky. There's one, yes, on the bug, swimming it in. That was cool, that was really cool. I watched you eat it. <laughs> Today has just been a really crazy day of fishing. Look how freaking chubby you are. Dude, I'm gonna put you back, okay? You little, <laughs> you little french fry eating nugget head. See you later, dude. Wow, that was a fat one. That was cool, I was hopping off the bottom, wasn't getting any bites, so I just reeled it in and oh, she was on it, man. Okay, last and final spot, I'm thinking this is, pond this is urban pond number five i'm going to right now um yeah same story different different honey hole i've never fished it looks tasty I'm gonna bring the wacky and the swim bait that's what we're rocking with i gotta grab some extra worms though there we go okay we're set let's go get them
Oh, Jesus. God bless America. He had it. That swim bait was gone. That fish was like fanning or something. It came up and just crushed that swim bait. Wow, okay. Didn't see that coming. At least I got to witness that. Oh my gosh. There's a fish right there. He followed it all the way up. That fish followed it all the way up. Son of a, getting some good shots with this swim bait. I just can't freaking execute. There's one, I'm on. Yes, no, he came off. No, no. What the wiener? What the freaking wieners? I am sucking straight. And Nasio freaking had, I knew it was gonna get bit on that cast too. That was just too good of a cast. I'm getting so much love on this big glide bait. They want it, man. They really actually want it. I'm just getting frustrated right now. Holy moly. Oh my gosh! That was not a small fish. Oh, it's a catfish! Holy sh! It's a big catfish! Oh my goodness! I am tweaking! I thought that was like no doubt a 10 pounder. I was like, I'm convinced that's my biggest bass ever. It comes right, you guys saw it. Like, why am I even explaining it? That was a catfish. All right, well, that was different. See, you guys need to throw these glide baits. I catch literally everything, not just bass. Oh, there's a fish. I have one. Oh my God, I burned it in. I was literally burning it in, just messing around. Oh my gosh, here we go, here we go, here we go, here we go. Yes! <laughs> you have got to be like just kidding me. That was so stupid. That was so stupid. I do not deserve that bass. This really has been the MVP. The big glide bait has done so much work today. Just putting them away. It's probably about a two pounder. So sick, man. Just burning that swim bait in. Not intentionally, but apparently it worked. <laughs> you got big buildings, big bass, and an awesome day of fishing. My lord, this has been fun. Get back down there. Can you believe it? The Hilton is literally right there and I'm catching bass on a pond that probably hundreds of people drive past and don't even realize has good fishing. Yeah, sauced. That's all I gotta say, just sauced. Oh, reunited with the rig runner. Yeah, not gonna, sure as hell I'm not gonna miss that Rav4. That thing is weird, man. I don't know if I like, ah, ah, I'm cool with this. This is way more simple. Anyway, as you may be able to tell, pond mission is over. I dabbled in all the Dallas ponds and caught some pretty good fish. Um, but yeah, I'm back at the dealership. Picked up my car. Just uh, listen, listen to what I had done to the vehicle. Here, let me pull over real quick so I'm not driving and, and you know, filming. That seems dangerous. The reason why I brought the rig runner into the shop today is because of like this airbag recall. I got a letter from Toyota and said I should bring it into a Toyota dealership. Um, so I did that. That cost zero dollars, of course. Then I got an oil and filter change for almost a hundred dollars. That seems pretty expensive now that I'm thinking about it. Then a vehicle inspection. I asked them to just kind of look it over to make sure everything's good. I mean, I beat the hell out of this car. I've put 30,000 miles on it since I first bought it. And it's my it's my primary whip. It's my daily. I drive this thing all the time, all over the place. And I want to make sure she's okay. You know, I'm not a freaking mechanic. I can't do this myself. I got a brake job rear and front. That was needed for sure. Uh, power steering flush, $159. Coolant service. What the hell does that mean? Does that mean they just flush the coolant? And I don't, I don't know. That doesn't make any sense. $179 dollars transfer case service 159 dollars rear different rear differential service another 159 dollars differential flush another 159 dollars the total bill after the brakes and all this flushing i've got a whopping uh total bill of 1500 dollars i'm gonna really need you guys to 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 buy some shirts because i i I don't know if I can afford this. This car's expensive. Now, the reason I bring this up is because I'm always super conflicted. Like, I cannot get under this hood and, and diagnose what's wrong with it. And I have to give these guys the benefit of the doubt, even though half the time I think I'm getting completely screwed. Like, that seems so expensive. You know, it's a Toyota. It's got 62,000 miles on it. It shouldn't have that many issues, but I feel like they just take advantage of the fact that you know, people like me don't know what the hell they're doing and we'll just say yes to anything. But the thing is, I'm worried, you know, like I I don't know, like maybe I do need this kind of stuff done. All these, fl <laughs> this flushing, the coolant flushing and the steering flushing and the toilet flushing. I don't know, it just doesn't make any sense to me. I have a weird hunch that half that shit didn't even need to get done, but I'm just so worried about it. I don't know why, why Why are we having this conversation? I need your guys' help. Like how, how do you how do you know you're not getting screwed by a mechanic? Did I like probably need all that for like a 2016 Forerunner? I feel like I didn't, but I said yes regardless and here we are now with a $1,500 um, 
uh, service bill. Okay, let's uh, let's head back to the crib. Oh, oh. Getting your little bento box. Boop. Well, I was gonna close out today's video, but I received something in the mail from Shop Carl. So uh, I figured let's just open it up on camera. By the way, I don't know what's in here, so I'm kind of curious. Oh, garage is still a mess. Don't look at it. So for those of you who don't know or may live under a small rock, uh, the Guggen Squad came out with our own line. We partnered with Catch Co. And we made monofilament braid and also, of course, fluorocarbon, which is my favorite. So yeah, they sent me some, uh, some line. This literally released like this week, so this is really new stuff. I only had a few spools for testing purposes, but now I've got, I mean, I'm, I'm sauced. I'm like locked and loaded. So if you guys wanna get some Guggen line, Check the top of the description below. Um, be sure to pick some up. It's probably not gonna last very long. I know a lot of you guys out there are already picking some up, which we greatly appreciate that. Thank you so much. This line is manufactured in Japan. A lot of Japanese products, as you guys know, I really like. And for some reason in Japan, creators really take pride in their work. So this is good stuff. Like I don't even need to say it. Like it's super legit. And obviously we wouldn't have crusty line. If we had crusty line, I'd be losing fish. I couldn't do that. So yeah, we've got some 50 pound, we've got some 12 pound mono, which would be good for top water. 15 pound fluorocarbon, good for crank and chat baits. Eight pound for drop shot leaders. We are in the process of getting 17 and 20 pound for all you heavy flippers out there. And then maybe even 22 and 25, but that's, it's a work in progress. This is still very, very new. We're pretty pumped to announce this, but yeah, scoop some line. Uh, I don't I don't know if there's any left, but I think there still is. Okay, so this is where I'm gonna end today's video. Thank you guys so much for watching today's pond fishing mission. I hope you enjoyed videos like this. I know not everyone does. A lot of you guys wanna see me fish out of the slow which is cool, I get that. But the thing is, I, I started my channel uh, fishing from the bank, so I have to kind of commemorate the old days by doing stuff like we did today. I am going to take a shower because I smell like swamp ass and get ready for tomorrow's adventure. Thanks for the view, folks. Stay safe, stay cool, and as always, folks, keep fishing. Never stop. <laughs>